What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com. In today's video, we're gonna check out the newest version of the Bagapi add-on, the all-in-one modeling add-on for Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so remember that the Bagapi modifier tool is a free download for Blender. So you can just go to Antoine's Gumroad page and download that for free just by entering a value of zero. Or if you wanna support him, you can put in a higher value in here as well um, and download that and use it. Remember that he also has an assets file, which I will link to in the notes down below, um, that does contain, in addition to having Bagapi, it's also got a bunch of like trees and uh, rocks and other things in it as well. So um, if you are interested in also having an asset library that you can use with the tools inside of bag of pie then that's an option as well like i said i will link to both of those in the notes down below but now let's check out some of the features in the new version so the first first feature i want to check out is the proxy function so the way the proxy function works is let's say that you wanted to scatter an object and i have the assets installed so i'm just going to tap the j key and then there's the option in here to scatter an asset and in this case i'm going to select one of the grasses so i'll maybe select maybe this grass right here and then when we do that, um, it's going to give us the option to use a proxy. I'm gonna say no, and I'm gonna turn the displayed instances down like this a little bit. But then you can turn those back up over here, and you can turn your density up. But remember, there is also an option in here to swap these to proxies now. So um, with this selected, if I click on the proxy button right here, notice how it's gonna swap these out for low poly proxies. And then when I wanna jump this back in, I can just click on this button right here to turn proxies on and off. So you've also got the ability now to add or remove objects from a scatter layer. So um, I've added the second scatter layer with these plants in here. But now what I wanna do is I wanna add this to that scatter layer, right? So I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna select this scatter system that I wanna add this to. I can click on the button right here to add this to that scatter layer. You can also select that scatter layer and the plant, and then you can remove the object from that layer as well. So you can drop these in to their own layers or you can add them to other layers in here. So in the announcement video, he's also showing camera culling. So you should be able to cull things out with the camera. I have not been able to quite sort that one out yet, um, but that is a feature that's in here. I'm just gonna have to do a little bit more research on that particular uh, feature. All right, so in addition, you've now got a pipes feature where you can add pipes so what it does is it lets you draw on a surface like this and that's going to draw like a pipe system and then you can adjust things like the radius you can adjust the uh, different profile pieces as well as the offset so like how high off the ground this goes other things like that so this gives you the ability to add different junctions and other things um, that are built in and again the cool thing about this is because it's built on geometry nodes right um, what you can do is you can actually go back and adjust these later so it's not like before where you'd have to tap the f9 key to try to get that back instead it just adds this in here no problem all right, so in addition, it now has a beam and column function. So the column function is gonna allow you to set either square or round columns. Then you can adjust the heights, you can adjust the radius, other things like that in order to create kind of a detailed column. So if I had a beam in here, notice it's gonna create this kind of like I-beam shape. So you can adjust things like your widths, your heights, your lengths, other things like that. So if you need to create anything with beams, this is a fast way to do that. Again, built on geometry nodes. So then you can come back and you can adjust these at any time. So it's also got a linear stair generator as well as a spiral stair generator. So you can use these to adjust things like your height, your step heights, other things like that really quickly. You can adjust your overall width if you wanna do that, and your thickness of your stringers. Notice how you can also inside of the modifiers themselves. Um, so basically this is adding a geometry nodes modifier, but you can come in here and you can adjust the materials. So for example, you want your stringers to be whatever this color right here, you can select that from the materials inside of your model. So adding materials is really easy to this, but these are live and you can fully adjust them using these settings. So the floor function, allows you to generate like a tile floor. So notice how I can use this in order to quickly add tiles in here. You can also adjust the offsets of those tiles like this in order to get different effects in here as well. So you can add a little bit of randomization. You can set how far off these are offset. So if you need to quickly add a floor in here, you can do that. That does offer the ability to plug a custom mesh in there as well. All right, so the handrail function allows you to draw a curve like this and it's gonna generate a handrail based on that curve. And again, you can come in here and you can adjust your materials and the modifier settings. You can adjust the size of the glass, the offset of the glass, as well as the thickness. 
And you can also adjust the overall height, the length of each module, other things like that. So you can adjust if the balusters are square or round, as well as if the handrails are square or round, like this. So a lot of functions that you can adjust in here that are all live using geometry nodes. So this is a really cool function if you are quickly adding those rails inside of Blender. Oh, and then one other thing about that is you can toggle the glass on and off, and you can add horizontal balusters in here instead. So if you want to create like a steel rail, you can do that using this tool. Notice how you can adjust the number Number of balusters in here, the offset, all those different things. So if you do want to create um, like a custom more of a steel baluster, you can do that as well. So you can also save an asset in your asset library. So for example, let's say you like this spiral stair and I tap the J key in here, it's going to give me the option to save that as an asset. And then you can pick your library that you have selected right here. And then you can click on the OK button. When you do that, what that's going to do is that's going to save this inside of your asset library. And you can bring that into Blender later on. So he's also improved the size of the asset library. If you do purchase that, you can find out more about that on this page right here. But you can kind of see a list of the assets that are contained in here. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this has been updated with the new assets or not. But you can see how it comes with a number of low poly assets. Assets. It comes with these higher detail assets. So that asset library size has been improved. All right, so I have a link to both the add-on as well as the asset library in the notes down below. There's zero reason why you wouldn't at least download the free version and try out some of the features like the handrails and the stairs, other things like that. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the direction of this add-on or about these geometry node-based add-ons in general for Blender. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.